Well, good afternoon, YTPC. This is Dave coming to you from the paddock in Southern Maryland. It's about 2.45 on Wednesday afternoon, January 10th. About 50 degrees and breezy outside, cloudy. Pretty nice day for the middle of January, though. So something kind of exciting, as always, the Maryland Meerschaum. But what's in it today is different. Just came in yesterday, I wanted to try it out. So it is Galwith and Hogarth's Bob's Chocolate Flake. And <clears throat> so it's got, it comes in pretty good sized flakes, but they're pretty thin. And this is about half a flake rubbed out because the other half is in the pipe. But since it's such a thin flake, it rubs out pretty easily. <clears throat> and you guys, this is the best pipe holder I've ever had. I mean, I know it's lowbrow. That's probably bordering on trailer trash. But I love this thing. I use it every day. I need another one. So Greg, if you're listening, how do I buy these things? I need one in Wyoming. Thank you, Greg. So Bob's chocolate flake. Compared to like cowboy coffee, this is like a man's man tobacco. It's stronger. It's got a sour, soapy... We use terrible words to describe how these taste, but it's got, it's stronger, it's got a sour flavor, it's got a soapy finish, and none of that's bad, but it is really, really different. Um, cowboy coffee is really nice, soft, tastes good. Um, Bob's Chocolate Fake isn't, but it's a great tobacco. And unlike the other flakes that I've tried, this one is staying pretty well lit. I mean, I've turned the camera on, so it's going to go out any second now. But That was really enjoyable. So I don't know if I'm saying it right, but the soapy finish reminds me of blends like Mississippi Mud and even a little EMP early morning pipe that got a little bit. But this, this is really good. And if you're going to go trailer trash, go all the way. So what am I drinking today? I am drinking Sugarland Shine Appalachian Apple Pie Moonshine right out of the mason jar. If you're going to go trailer, go all the way. Anyway, back when I had my company, I had about 70 guys in West Virginia, Clarksburg. West Virginia, and I spent from 1999 through 2019, I probably drove out to Clarksburg, West Virginia, between 300 and 400 times. So the DC Beltway to 70 to 270, no, 270 to 70 to 68, Sidling Hill Gap. 68 all the way out to where it merges um, at Fairmont, Fairmont South to Clarksburg to Morgantown. I'm sorry, Morgantown and Clarksburg, then Fairmont. I've eaten many a steak dinner at the Wonder Bar. If anybody's West Virginia in that part of West Virginia, you know what the Wonder Bar is. It's fantastic hillside. It was by the 1950s steakhouse. They upgraded it in the 70s and put shade carpet on the walls, and that is the upgrade you currently live with. But it's a fantastic meal. It's a great view. And um, they put a deck on the lower level that's actually pretty good. So anyway, there's what's in the pipe. There's what I'm drinking and a little West Virginia story for you. Just smoke my pipe with you guys for a minute.
It's really good. Had a good day today. All the Christmas decorations got tetris back into their closets. Our house looks pretty normal. Did the family grocery shopping today? Not for weapons, for actual food. Got a couple honeydews done, a couple hairy owner, owner things done. And got over here a little bit early. So it's just that so far it's been a wonderful day. The only real paddock update today <clears throat> is I built this little two drawer file cabinet. I've got another one behind the camera there in the box still, but I don't like doing that crap. So I'm only doing one today. That's the nice thing about being an adult, right? You don't have to do it. I'm doing one, but not both. No one can tell me I have to do both today. It's dangerous drinking it out of the jar. It's better for me at least to put a measured amount over ice or something in a, in a cup. I was surprised how many people responded to last night's video with, uh, hey, we like the quiet and gentle one. We like the quiet smoke with you. And that one, didn't expect that. It was a good palate cleanser. <clears throat> I can't remember if it was Uncle Willie or Greg that were offended that no one was offended by that video. So at least we offended one person. That's our goal, right? I think it's good, though, sometimes to get off the momentum train. I think those of us with, those of us with uh, strong opinions and strong personalities can sometimes get on a little bit of a self-love train and you know my all my opinions are right and all of them can be expressed any way I want and you get on this momentum and you just get <clears throat> maybe a little more confident a little more confident a little more confident to so really kind of blow yourself up and so um I think it's good to bring it kind of to a complete halt take a couple of days off and um you guys responded really well to that so thank you So guys, I want to do one thing with you today. <clears throat> I want to read Exodus chapter 21 to you. Again, I want to stress again how weird and ironic it is that Dave is going to read the Bible on a video. But at least I'm doing it while having some moonshine. I'm way more comfortable with the moonshine than reading scriptures on the internet. I want to talk a little bit after it. It's actually like two or three chapters I'd like to get to. Maybe I'll do one a night so I don't bore the complete crap out of you. So the setup here is that Moses, or Moshe in the scriptures that I'm reading to you, is actually standing before God, or Yah, in the scriptures. And Yah is dictating verbally to Moshe, the laws which he expects us to live by. And this is really just the beginning. It's several chapters long, and I think it's too much to consume in one video. But I do want to read it to you. We might take a break, but I'm going to start. So this is Exodus chapter 21. 
This is Yah speaking. These are the right rulings which you are to set before them. And them, by the way, are the people of Israel, or Israel, the people, the Hebrews that he brought out of Egypt. These are the right rulings which you are to set before them. When you buy a Hebrew servant, he serves six years, and in the seventh he goes out free for naught. If he comes in by himself, he goes out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children are her masters, and he goes out by himself. And if the servant truly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, let me not go out free, then... His master shall bring him before Elohim and shall bring him to the door or to the doorpost and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl and he shall serve him forever. And when a man sells his daughter to be a female servant, she does not go out as the male servants do. If she is displeasing in the eyes of her master who has engaged her to himself, then he shall let her be ransomed. He shall have no authority to sell her to a foreign people because of him deceiving her. And if he has engaged her to his son, he is to do to her as is the right of daughters. And if he takes another wife, her food, her covering, and her marriage rights are not to be diminished. And if he does not do these three for her, then she shall go out for naught without silver. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall certainly be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait, but Elohim delivered him into his hands, then I shall appoint for you a place where he is to flee. But when a man acts presumptuously against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you are taken to take him even from my slaughter place to die. And he who strikes his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And he who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hand, shall certainly be put to death. And he who cures, curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And when men strive together, and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist, and he does not die but is confined to his bed, if he rises again and walks about outside with his staff, then he who struck him shall be innocent. He only pays for lost time and sees to it that he is completely healed. And when a man strikes his male or female servant with a rod, so that he dies under his hand, he shall certainly be avenged. But if he remains alive a day or two, and he is not avenged, for he is his property. And when men strive, and they shall smite a pregnant woman, and her children come out, yet there is no serious injury, he shall certainly be punished accordingly, as the woman's husband lays upon him, and he shall give through the judges. But if there is injury when you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, lash for lash. And when a man strikes the eye of his male or female servant and destroys it, he is to let him go free for the sake of his eye. And if he knocks out the tooth of his male or female servant, he is to let him go free for the sake of his tooth. And when an ox gores a man or a woman to death, then the ox shall certainly be stoned and its flesh not eaten, and the owner of the ox is innocent. However, if the ox were previously in the habit of goring, and its owner has been warned, and he has not kept it confined, so that it has killed a man or a woman, the ox is stoned, and its owner also is put to death. In a sin covering, if a sin covering is laid upon him, 
and he shall give the ransom of his life, whatever is laid on him. Whether has gored a son or gored a daughter, according to this right ruling, it is done to him. If the ox gores a male or female servant, he is to give to their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox is stoned. And when a man opens a pit, or if a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or donkey falls in it, the owner of the pit is to repay. He is to give silver to the owner, and the dead beast is his. And when the ox of a man smites the ox of his neighbor and it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the silver from it and also divide the dead ox. Or if it was known that the ox was previously in the habit of goring and its owner has not kept it confined, he shall certainly repay ox for ox while the dead beast is his. We'll stop there for today, guys. But I warn you, Exodus 22 and Exodus chapter 23 are just as definitive, just as detailed about what God expects from us in our behavior. Maybe we'll read those tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this lands. If you want, express your opinion. Make a video or comment in this video. Tell me what you think. Is this sort of content? too weird you want to hear what 22 and 23 say you can go read it yourself by the way but um yeah, give me your thoughts so guys that like i told you that was my third time through that part through the bible and it still blows me away it blows me away the specificity which god talked to moses it blows me away that what at least 3,000 years later, we were able to read that level of detail. Um, the harshness of those laws, the law of Moses, the, uh, the, the number of ways where it's really undeniably expected that the person who commits the crime will be put to death. You know, really without without quibble. Uh, that really surprised me. So it really brings up for me what what is the Bible? I mean, I know it's the book. Peace, come on. But what is it? Is it truly God speaking to us? through divine inspiration, and in this case, directly to another man. And that has been revalidated time and time again through history to be exactly that. And the Bible that sits before us is, in fact, the Word of God, and the things that are in it are God speaking directly to us. Do you believe that? Is that true? And that's sort of the foundation of the modern Bible, as I've been taught it over the years. Now, I grew up Methodist. Not really sure what that means, but I spent a lot of time in the church. Now, one of my favorite guys in here is Potter Piper. He commented on one of my videos the other day. I'm not outing him because he commented it here in public. Because maybe sometimes the Bible talks about rules that were meant for a certain time period or a certain people. And sometimes maybe the Bible is talking universal truths for all time. A great comment and some spice to throw into the stew of this discussion. I feel like sometimes our roles as uh, hosts and presenters is to present material.
but maybe not always interpret it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to interpret what I read to you. I don't know what I'm thinking with it yet. I'm thinking it blows me away three years in a row. But I don't know what I think of it yet. I've always heard that the basis for Western world, um, the Western world justice system is based in biblical law, and based in the law of Moses. And I'm really not sure I ever believed that, but now I read this and I, I kind of get where that comes from. Now we've watered it down and weakened it quite a bit. If you believe what was just read to you is actually the desire of God to dictate our behavior or guide our behavior. But it is, um, it's plausible. I can see it now that those words that I read to you really worked its way all the way through time into today's judicial system. All right, guys, I just assembled all those pieces in the video and we're at 21 minutes, so I don't want to go a whole lot longer. <clears throat> I do want to express that I know I'm not an idiot, okay? I know I'm treading on hallowed ground here. Um, I know I'm asking crazy fundamental questions. And maybe one that I, I don't want to go a lot further with as far as interpreting it for us or, you know... I just think asking questions is so important. And a big one for you, for me, as individuals, is without help, what is the Bible to you? What is the Bible? You know, we give us such shallow answers. Well, it's the book. It's the Word of God. You know, I just think those are cheap easy answers because if you believe it's the actual word of god throughout the book what about all the books that were written with the same manner of inspiration maybe and didn't make it in or got taken out by man as we went through the councils to pick the bible as it exists today and what are you going to do if another canonical council gets called out and they put a book in or they take a couple books out because they don't speak to the modern vernacular of the church or of whatever group is reviewing the contents of the Bible at that particular time. So for you, what does the Bible represent? That is a great, you don't have to answer. Again, I always say this, you don't have to answer the question to me or on the videos or make a video or comments on this one. That is not what I'm saying. But you need to know the answer to that question. What is this thing called the Bible to you? And what does the contents of this book mean to you? And you better read every word of it before you answer that question, in my opinion. But how you answer that question and then you read the contents and it might change what you think of the book or what you think the book is. I'm going to end the video tonight with some opinions. My opinion for me. I am not trying to project it onto anyone watching this video. But I have trouble with the opinion that the Bible is not meant to be read by the common man and understood as the common man understands it. I have a problem believing that the common man needs someone more learned to have the content of the Bible interpreted for them. I believe that is one of the cruxes of what's wrong in the world, that we can't trust the common man with this material, that there has to be a more learned approach to understanding what God meant, that you can't read it and understand it. I think that's wrong. Um, once you've read it and have your own understandings of it, go get other opinions. Go get other interpretations. What does the church say? What do the different branches of the church say about it? But you're looking to all of that as your 
board of advisors. You're the CEO of your own belief system. You have to decide what is this book to you and what is the contents and how are the contents meant to impact your life and your decisions from tomorrow forward. You have to decide whether you need help interpreting this system, these words. Um, I don't know where I am on mine yet, but I just wanted to end it with that. You know, I love this system. I love that you can say these things and, and generate conversations. Um, you know, whether you completely and vehemently disagree with me and everything I've said, or whether you agree with every word I've said, or you're somewhere in the middle, we still can fit together. We can still be friends. We can still talk about these things. I'm not trying to change your opinion. I'm not trying to change any one person's opinion because I have mine. I'm just saying I think it's good to have a belief system, to know what your beliefs are, to know why we believe our beliefs, what are those beliefs based upon, and be willing and open to change our beliefs and change the foundations of our belief should sufficient evidence be provided to us to make us rethink them? That's it. Guys, it's Wednesday evening. Hope you have a great day. I'm pretty sure we'll talk again tomorrow. Talk back to me. Talk back to me. Thanks, you guys.